What's up everyone? Today I have 50 famous TV characters that I've turned into Lego minifigures. We have new shows, old shows, shows from your childhood, and more. So let's get into it. First, we have one of the coolest minifigures for this series with Moon Knight, who in my opinion is probably the coolest hero to come out of Marvel's Phase 4, albeit that isn't setting the bar very high. He was highly requested, and at first, I didn't think I was going to be able to make him work because of his hood. It wouldn't fit, but eventually, I just shoved it down over that mask piece which makes it illegal since it's straining the parts some. His mummy pieces are from a mix of minifigures, and his head is the Witch King's. If you don't have that custom hood piece, you can also use Zane's hood from Ninjago. Next up, we have another requested duo with Rick and Morty. If I'm being honest, I haven't watched the show, but I know it has a huge fan base. I particularly like how Rick turned out. The Doc Brown hairpiece is perfect for him since Rick and Morty are parodies of the original Back to the Future characters. I also liked getting to use that Lord Business headpiece to show Rick's unibrow. Almost every picture I see of Morty shows him scared or confused, so I used Bilbo's headpiece. I also gave Rick this futuristic gizmo for his experiments. Speaking of Rick, I also made Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead, and to give him a companion, I also made this zombie, R.I.P. Carl. Rick's head is Sirius Black's, and I gave him this cool hatchet piece and pistol for taking out all of the zombies. Our next minifigure is a throwback to one of my childhood favorites, Batman Beyond. The most challenging part of the minifigure was finding a way to make the eyes show underneath the cowl. Usually, Batman minifigures have a white headband that give him his white eyes, but for Batman Beyond, a lot of the time you can't see his mouth, or it's only a white line, making a suitable headpiece hard to come by. However, I eventually came across this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles head, which has a red headband across the back of it, giving Batman red eyes, which aren't accurate to the original show, but are included in some iterations of the character. For his wings, unfortunately, I don't have anything red that would work, so I gave him these black ones. However, if I had this black vampire bat minifigure, I think it would have looked even better. Our next minifigure is an all-time classic that I think is underappreciated, Rod Serling from The Twilight Zone which told stories of the mysterious, unexplainable, and bizarre. He also appeared as a host within many of the show's episodes, so I wanted to include him here. Imagine, if you will, that the entire world around you was made of nothing more than plastic bricks. That free will was a delusion, and every nook and cranny of your life had been carefully constructed and planned from an instruction book. That's where Emmett has found himself today in the Twilight Zone. Our next three minifigures come from a much different modern classic, The Office. So LEGO recently released an official set based on The Office, and it's a great set. It's probably one of my favorites from the past five years. It's full of references, and it comes with a ton of minifigures. However, it costs $120, and I figured I may be able to make some of the characters using my own pieces. Since they're all wearing regular office clothes, I really wanted to focus on getting the expressions right. For Michael, I went with this overly happy face since he's always trying to be optimistic, even when his plans inevitably go horribly wrong. I made Jim a bit casualer. I'm using Anakin's hairpiece and this happy looking face. I also gave him this cup and this paper piece as an accessory to reference the famous scene from the show where he pulls the future Dwight prank. I gave Dwight this brown suit and this skeptical looking face that does a good job of showing Dwight's smug personality. I also gave him these sighs since he hides weapons around the office. Next up, we have TJ from the 90s cartoon Recess, another one of my favorite cartoons growing up. I remember always wanting to be like TJ since he was the coolest one in his friend group and they were always making schemes to do fun and crazy stuff on the show. His hair should be a bit lighter, but other than that, I think the figure turned out really well. For another iconic cartoon character, we have Ash Ketchum from Pokemon. I based this version off of his original series appearance. He has these cool short sleeves and these green gloves. For accessories, I also gave him a Pokeball. Unfortunately, LEGO doesn't have a perfect hair hat combo piece for him, but the one I used for TJ works pretty well for when Ash turns his hat around during battles. For a bonus fact, my favorite Pokemon are Hitmonchan and Persian. Let me know your favorites down in the comments. Our next minifigure is Wednesday Adams from the recent breakout hit, Wednesday, based on the original Adams Family series. I haven't watched the show, but I tried to capture her creepy, dark personality. Bellatrix's face is perfect for her sunken cheeks, and surprisingly, Violet's hair is a pretty good fit as well, albeit it doesn't have pigtails. 
One of my favorite Nickelodeon shows growing up was Drake and Josh. It was the first, and still is one of the only sitcom type of shows that I actually enjoy watching. Growing up with a brother, all of the trouble they always found themselves in was really relatable, knowing that by the end of the episode they would reconcile and look out for each other. I styled Josh after his movie theater appearance. I gave Drake this cool jean jacket, along with this guitar piece. Hug me, brother! <laughs> Our next duo comes to us from the UK's hit series Sherlock, featuring Benedict Cumberpatch as Sherlock Holmes and Martin Freeman as Watson. I've given them stylish British outfits since they always look fashionable in the show. Sherlock's hair is a bit light, but the shape of that piece is perfect. For Watson, I couldn't decide if he needed a grey hair piece or this lighter one. As a bonus fact, both Martin Freeman and Benedict Cumberpatch have made other LEGO appearances. Benedict Cumberpatch has appeared as the Necromancer and Smog from the Hobbit films, and as Doctor Strange from Marvel. Martin Freeman appeared in numerous sets as Bilbo Baggins. Moving on to yet another duo, we have He-Man and Skeletor. These were two more figures that I really had no idea how to translate into LEGO since their costumes are so unique. For He-Man, I'm using this torso from Ninjago, which admittedly is not perfect, but it at least has these snake prints on the chest to echo He-Man's original costume. To continue with that color scheme, I gave him this piece from The Wrestler that has boots and blue underwear. Similarly, I had to make some changes to Skeletor as well, but I like him even better. I started off with Beast Boy's torso, since it at least has some purple accents, along with the visible muscles. Then I used these legs from this alien minifigure. His torso isn't completely accurate, but it still has skulls on it, so I think that's about the best that I could hope for. Even though they aren't completely accurate, He-Man and Skeletor ended up being two of my favorites for this series. For another, much plainer classic cartoon character, we have George Jetson. Since his original look is so simple, he was definitely one of the easiest to make for this series. I gave him this green belt with this hinge piece, as well as this futuristic phaser thing. Our next three minifigures are from the show Parks and Rec. This is Leslie Nope, played by Amy Poehler, and besides the freckles, I think that headpiece looks a lot like her. Our next addition is Ron Swanson, and out of all the minifigures for today, this one may be the best look-alike. For his accessories, I gave him both a steak and a chicken leg, since he's always talking about his manly mills. And for our last character, I went ahead and included Andy Dwyer. Since Chris Pratt has made so many LEGO appearances, I figured why not include one more. For his accessory, I gave him a hot dog. A lot of my viewers enjoy superhero content, so I've included Clark Kent and Lex Luthor from my favorite superhero show of all time, Smallville. The show tells the story of a young Clark Kent as he goes through high school and learns about his superpowers. It also shows how Lex and Clark slowly turn from friends to enemies. Clark has this blue and red jacket because he's always wearing those colors in the show to foreshadow his eventual suit. For Lex, I'm using this Draco Malfoy face that is another spot-on resemblance from Michael Rosenbaum, the actor who played Lex Luthor. Lex has a piece of kryptonite, and Clark has this disc piece representing the key to his spaceship. For a bonus fact, Rosenbaum has worked with James Gunn on the Guardians of the Galaxy films, and there have been rumors that he would like to return as Lex Luthor for Gunn's DC franchise reboot. This is something I'd love to see, because Rosenbaum's portrayal of Lex Luthor is easily the best in my opinion. Next up, we have three characters from Breaking Bad. This is my version of Walter White. He definitely looks too happy, but finding a Lego head with a brown goatee, a frown, and a pair of glasses is a challenge. I think that hat is a custom piece, so if you don't have it, this one from Snape would also work. This is Jesse Pinkman, complete with his signature beanie and this stubbly face that looks really anxious. I also gave him that jacket that looks kinda drabby, and he has a pistol as well. Finally, we have Saul Goodman. Lego doesn't have a perfect hairpiece for him, so I went ahead with this really common one. He has this constitution since he's going to protect your rights. Our next minifigure is another classic cartoon, Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. I started with that headpiece, which is Captain Cold's from the Mighty Micro set, which makes this the first time I've ever used a piece from that theme. It released from 2016 to 18, and consisted of sets that came with two superheroes, along with vehicles that were themed after them. Each set only cost $10, but the minifigures were always wacky variants, which I bet deterred a lot of buyers. The sad thing about it was that it introduced some minifigures that have only ever been released in those weird variants. These exclusives include Doomsday, along with Bizarro Superman, who's only ever been released otherwise as an incredibly rare San Diego Comic Con minifigure that sells for thousands of dollars. Additionally, it was the only way you could get Thanos as a minifigure until he was finally released in 2020 in his mech suit. To this day, I'm still waiting on a Doomsday minifigure that doesn't look completely derpy. But back to Dexter. After picking out the head, I gave him this lab coat and purple gloves along with a beaker. 
if you don't have that hairpiece, the one available now in the Carrot minifigure guy would probably be even better, since it has a curly look. For another Cartoon Network classic, I've made Samurai Jack. As a kid, I always thought Samurai Jack felt cooler and edgier than a lot of other cartoons on TV. The way he never talked, and the show's animation style made it really distinct. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see very much since my family didn't have cable growing up, so watching shows like these was a treat that I only got when I went to my cousin's or grandparents' house. He's made using a variety of Ninjago pieces. For another couple of TV classics, we have Andy Griffith and Barney Fife. Both of them have their police uniforms, and Barney has a pistol since it's a running gag in the show that he's only allowed to have one bullet. I also gave him this smiling embarrassed face that I thought would fit his personality. For another custom superhero, I've made this Green Arrow minifigure based off of the Arrow TV show. At first, I wasn't sure if I should make this minifigure because LEGO has technically already released it. However, it was only as a San Diego Comic Con exclusive today, that minifigure sells for thousands of dollars and is extremely rare, so I figured I would make one that looks almost as good, with pieces you can get a lot easier. I started with this Green Arrow minifigure that LEGO released in this poly bag, and Aquaman's legs. He doesn't always wear his mask, so I gave him Chris Pratt's headpiece. I'm glad I decided to make it because I like it better than the original minifigure. A ton of viewers requested Stranger Things characters, so I've made Steve Harrington and Billy Hargrove. Steve is in his Scoops Ahoy uniform, made out of Donald Duck's torso and Woody's legs. Billy is looking grubby as ever in this wife beater, which unfortunately makes him look a bit chubby. Both of them are using the same hairpiece, which fits in with the 80s vibe of the show. Another minifigure I was really surprised to see a lot of people request was a Power Ranger. If you didn't already know, LEGO released a minifigure that is basically a variant of the Red Ranger. However, they called it the Super Warrior instead of Power Ranger to avoid copyright infringement, but there's no doubt that it's what they were going for. So to keep my custom from just being that version, I switched out his torso and legs for some Ninjago pieces and gave him this Power Ranger type looking sword. So maybe he's a jungle version or something. I never followed the shows, but the main thing I remember is how it started over like every six months. It was Time Force, then Ninja Storm, then Wild Force, then Dino Thunder. I never understood why they felt the need to change it so often. Our next minifigure is Tim Allen's Tim the Toolman Taylor from Home Improvement. I didn't discover this show until the past couple years, but now I really like it. It's so wholesome, and Tim Allen is hilarious. His minifigure turned out really well because LEGO has made plenty of builder minifigures over the years. Albeit the hair isn't perfect. Uh? This is my version of Gordon Ramsay. For his torso, I'm using the Spencers, and he has this chef's knife. What are you? I'm an idiot sandwich! Another highly requested minifigure was any of the doctors from Doctor Who, so I went ahead and picked the 10th Doctor, played by David Tennant. He has both a brown suit and a blue suit. So I've created both versions, and for accessories, I gave him this gold lightsaber piece that I'm imagining as his sonic screwdriver. For a bonus fact, LEGO has released three Doctor Who sets, which included two versions of the 12th Doctor, as well as the 11th Doctor. But for an additional bonus fact, David Tennant has been turned into a LEGO minifigure, but it was for Harry Potter, not Doctor Who. In Harry Potter, he played the villain Marty Crouch Jr., who disguises himself as Mad-Eye Moody. Our next minifigure is Walter from the show Fringe which is about the fringe division of the FBI, which investigates weird science fiction anomalies like altered humans and realities. Walter is a mad scientist type of character who nearly ended the world by opening an alternate dimension. To keep his negative impulses at bay, he gave himself a lobotomy, which he hoped would keep him from ever getting too smart. And he also likes milkshakes, so that's his accessory. Next up, we have Bob the Builder. His hat is from the Carpenter, but I wasn't sure what accessory to give him. Better check Google. Alright, that seems pretty accurate. This is my version of Malcolm from Malcolm in the Middle. He's another really simple minifigure, but I really liked the show growing up. And the craziness of Malcolm's family always felt really relatable to me. This is Dr. House. As a kid, he always came across as mean, condescending, and scary, so I wasn't a fan of the show, but it was insanely popular for a long time. I gave him this syringe and this Harry Potter wand as a cane. Our next minifigure is John Cena. I gave him these jean shorts from the dog trainer, and he has this championship belt on his torso. Here comes! <laughs> Another requested minifigure was Mr. Rogers. He has a nice sweater, and for an accessory, I gave him this stuffed bunny toy, which I thought would be fitting for him since he's always working with kids. I also gave him different studs for his feet, since he's always changing his shoes. 
For two more superhero minifigures, I've included Wanda and Vision in their 50s style human forms from the first couple episodes of WandaVision. To match the style of the episode, I tried to pick out pieces for both of them that I thought looked really old fashioned. In my opinion, those first couple episodes in black and white were the most interesting in the series because I like classic television, but from what I've heard, I don't think many other people would agree with that. Next, we have another trio of minifigures with Carly, Sam, and Freddy from iCarly. I gave Sam this biker jacket since she's tough in the show. Carly and Freddy's clothes are pretty standard, but I gave them each accessories to match their roles. Carly has a microphone, while Freddy has the laptop and camera since he's the tech guy. For our last minifigure, we have young Count Dooku from Tales of the Jedi, a new series on Disney+, Plus, which in my opinion has turned out to be some of the best Star Wars content of the past few years. It tells a couple of different stories, but one of the main ones is Dooku's fall to the dark side. If you're a fan of the prequels, it's definitely worth your time to check out. And all of the episodes are only 10 to 20 minutes long. And that is all 51 of our minifigures. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have recommendations for a future episode or other video ideas, leave them in the comments. And until next time, see you later.